Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Keep remembering to stay with the breath all the way in with the in-breath, all the way out with the out. Each breath coming in, each breath going out. You have to keep reminding yourself because the mind has such a, an easy time forgetting. Something new springs up and you just go running after it because it's new and interesting. And you forget what you're here for. You're here to train the mind because the mind needs training. You have to be very careful about what comes into the mind, what goes out into the mind. Because what comes in is, it can often stir up all kinds of things that you didn't plan on, that you didn't want, and yet there they are. They're stirring you up, and then they start coming out in terms of your thoughts and your words and your deeds. So you need mindfulness to be your, your doorman or the, the gatekeeper at the door, making sure that only good things come in and only good things come out. Because you have to keep remembering that your life is not a matter of just enjoying things outside or pushing away things you don't like. It's a matter of remembering that you are creating the conditions for your life by what you do and what you say and what you think. And those things, in turn, are affected by the, the things you focus on. If you focus on things that give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion, well, greed and aversion and delusion are going to get stirred up in the mind, and then they're going to start coming out in your actions. So the gatekeeper has to be very careful both about who comes in and who goes out. That's why the Buddha taught restraint of the senses. When you're going to look at something, you ask yourself, why am I looking at this? When you're listening, you ask yourself, why am I listening? And if you're looking for the purpose of greed or for the purpose of lust or for the purpose of anger, the Buddha says, don't look. It's not saying that you don't look at all, just learn how to look in a different way. Rem keep remembering that your motivation for looking and listening has a huge impact on the mind. And if you're looking for things that give rise to greed, you'll find them. If you're looking for things that give rise to anger, you'll find them they're scattered all over the place. And yet, is that what you want to have stirred up in the mind? You have to ask yourself this question again and again. You remind yourself, I'm shaping my life by my actions, and if my actions are caused by greed, aversion, illusion, they're not going to give the results I want. So that's the first duty of mindfulness. Your gatekeeper is to keep watch on why you're looking, why you're listening. And if you're looking for the wrong reasons, well, turn around and find some good reasons for looking, or some good ways of looking. If you find something that gives rise to lust, well, learn how to look at it in a way that gets rid of that lust, or at the very least calms it down. If you look at somebody that you feel angry about, and you're looking for something to get angry and worked up about, and the mind is that way, it likes to get worked up about things, okay, try to look at the good side of the other person. Or at the very least, remind yourself that when you're overcome by anger, you're going to do a lot of stupid things. And if you have any enemies, they'll be really pleased by the stupid things you do. Are you going to like that? Well, no. So that's the first duty of the gatekeeper, is what's coming in, then what's going out. Okay, so suppose anger does get stirred up. You have to be able to say no to expressing, expressing the anger. Suppose your greed gets stirred up, your lust, your pride, these things get stirred up. You have to be very firm in saying no. This is one of the reasons why we work with the breath, because usually when you say no to yourself, there's a sense of tension or tightness in the body. And when you work with the breath, you can release that tension, you can dissolve that tightness. So there's not so much resistance. So you're not feeling all bottled up inside. So this is one of the things you want to keep remembering, is this ability to keep remembering what's really right, what's really wrong, what's really important in life, and what's important in life are your actions. And so you want to make sure that you create the right conditions for those actions, so you're not stirring up more trouble. To so make sure that your gatekeeper is well trained, knows who to let in, who to keep out, and when things are coming out, and he knows which things to allow to come out into the world, and which things you say these are better kept, best kept inside. So this is one of the reasons why we stick with the breath, because it's so easy to forget these things. One impulse comes in, and it can wipe out a lot of good that you've done. So you've got to keep reminding yourself: okay, you can't give in to those impulses. Sometimes the little impulses they seem very tender and very very safe, but they build up over time. So you have to watch out for them. They can become large. Like that. The image the Buddha gives is of a vine climbing up a tree. At first the vine seems very, very small, and its tendrils are very downy and soft. But as it goes around and around and around the tree, it finally strangles the tree, and that's the end of it. So you have to watch out for some of the little things coming in and little things going out. And particularly watch out for why you're looking, why you're listening, why you're acting. Make sure that you do these things only on good motives. And remember to keep this all in mind. And practice your powers of mindfulness so you can keep it in mind, especially when you really need it.